Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar run for the UK V, have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days as we are going to see some more unsettled conditions moving in over the next few days into the weekend but it doesn't look too bad, mostly confined to the north and west. As we head into next week high pressure is going to be building in and that does look like it's going to dominate as we head towards early November. Now into early November, we still have a very strong high pressure signal, but we've seen a slight shift in the positioning of that high pressure in the past day or so. Now originally, earlier this week, it looked like it was going to sit over the top of us with milder air masses. However, in the last few updates, what we've seen is that high pressure shifting further northwards. And we've actually got a few runs today that produces some properly cold air coming in from the north or the northeast. That's a very interesting update as we are heading towards the period of the year where cold weather, proper cold weather, does start to become possible. But by no means are we definitely seeing a very cold pattern or any snow or anything like that. But we are seeing hints that northern blocking, high pressure towards Greenland, Scandinavia and Iceland is starting to appear within some of these model outputs and potentially increasing, especially in the ensembles. So we'll explore that in the second half of the video. So do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. Now, if you start on the live radar, you can see it is fairly dry at the moment, as I'm calling this around 4pm on Thursday. You can see out to our north and west, we have got rain moving in, and it is going to rain pretty heavily across the Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and Western Scotland. However, as that rain slowly shifts eastwards and southwards, with this air of low pressure, it's getting squeezed from all sides by higher pressure. And any of that rain that does spread south and eastwards will be pure remnants. And it'll be much lighter and will be patchy as we head into Friday. That pattern looks like it's going to continue through the weekend with weather fronts trying to push in from the north and west. Some are having success in Northern Ireland and Scotland, but elsewhere not pushing too far inland. Hopefully keeps that dry theme as we head into next week. Now, if you put in the temperatures, you can see at the moment it is fairly mild, nothing amazing. You can see across France there is some warm conditions. We've still got a bit of a west leaf low, so although it is dry, it's mild, it's not terribly warm. Uh, you can see that warm air is confined more across the near continent. Of course, we are getting to the time of year where it comes almost impossible to see anything uh, that we'd sort of classify as warm, i.e. high teens, 20 degrees. It's almost getting impossible to get that now. But for late October, we can't really be asking for much more than what we've got at the moment. Now, if you go over to the latest UKV, you can see the rain spreading in from the north and the west at the moment. It is going to rain heavily in places, maybe South Wales and southwest England as well, around midnight tonight. But you can see that rain slowly tries to push in further inland, but it fragments and loses intensity, and it could bring a bit of rain further eastwards across England, but we're not expecting a tremendous amount at all, just a bit more thicker cloud associated with that. As we head through Friday evening into Saturday, that rain clears, and then into Saturday afternoon, another area of rain moves in from the north and the west, but again, it fragments and fades away as it drifts inland. Into Sunday, another big area of rain arrives for Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and Western Scotland, but once again, as it shifts southwards and eastwards, it loses its intensity, coming up against that big area of high pressure over Europe and you see that pattern as we head into Tuesday with all that rain disintegrating away into a few patchy showers and just generally some thicker cloud. So although yes there is a lot of rain that arriving it does not make a lot of progress as it pushes south and eastwards. Some areas will still see some quite heavy rain but we're not expecting widespread deluges which did look plausible a few days ago. It looks like the high pressure in the last couple of days is winning out and it means that low pressure uh, isn't going to be nowhere near as intense as it moves in and we're not going to see as much rain. As I said, we can look at the mean sea level pressure. You see high pressure down to our southeast. That's what's holding off these weather fronts and are not allowing them to make much progress. Now, of course, under higher pressure with westerly winds, it's going to be pretty mild. As you see temperatures today around the mid-teens, maybe peaking at 16, 17 degrees. It'll be similar as we head into Friday. Once again, widely low teens, mid-teens, maybe even 16 or 17 again in the east. As we head into Saturday, uh, again, 
pretty mild. Mid-teens, not quite as high, with some slightly fresh air moving in behind the remnants of that weather front, but still pretty decent. As we head into Sunday, maybe a bit of a frost for northern and western areas, some slightly colder air moving in, but really nothing too bad. You can see by Sunday afternoon, temperatures, yes, a little bit chillier, but it's going to be dry, and that's all we can really ask for this time of year. Best temperatures 13, 14, so really just hovering around average. And then into Monday, a similar story, mostly into the low teens, maybe single digits across northern Scotland, maybe 15, 16 degrees across the parts of the south east. And as I said, this sort of dry pattern is looking likely to continue around Halloween and into early November, but we have seen that shift to a higher risk of something colder. Now, if you run through the latest GFS, which really highlights that development in that longer range period. Now, you can see at the moment, we've got low pressure coming in off the Atlantic. That's bringing that slightly unsettled conditions over the next couple of days, but it gets squeezed away by high pressure to our east, to our south, and to our west. Now, as we head into next week, this is where we see high pressure building in for the last few days of October. And for Halloween, it looks like it's going to be pretty good indeed. The ideal pattern, high pressure, slap bang over the top of us. Look at the air masses, fairly mild for the time of year. Yes, there could be a little bit of an inversion taking place, so it could be slightly chillier at times. But into the low to mid-teens, can't ask for much more than that for the last day of October. But is what happens in the subsequent days. Runs early this week just had that high pressure sat over the top of us. But instead, what we've seen in the last sort of 24 hours or so is signs of that high pressure ridging northwards. And look at day 10, early November, high pressure spreading towards Greenland. Now, if we were in early December, as no, only four weeks beyond this time frame, there would be a lot of hype uh, as this could potentially develop into a very cold pattern but there is a lot of cooling that takes place during the month of november and it means the air masses to our north and our east are nowhere near as cold in early november as they will be in early december which means that this is unlikely to uh, if this does come off in the first place unlikely to develop anything major which is as said plausible late november early december but what we see here is that high pressure push northwards, trying to push in northerly or easterly winds. It doesn't have too much success as the high pressure isn't able to fully penetrate into the Arctic. So we do remain under the higher pressure, but we've got these cold air masses just to our north and our east trying to push in, having some success at times, but actually developing into a very cold early November for much of Central and Eastern Europe. Look at all those purples to our east. Yes, maybe not over the UK. We're not going to see anything majorly cold, but definitely potentially across Central and Eastern Europe. Now, for the UK, we still would be actually pretty cold. You see temperatures overnight down towards freezing, daytime temperatures mid to high single digits. And that's because under the higher pressure with a northerly flow, it will still be chilly, regardless of what the upper air temperatures say, because we are likely to see an inversion, lower dew points, drier air moving in, all of that culminating in a much colder feel, but not a very cold pattern, not cold to develop snow or widespread frost or anything like that, which is possible if we did see that direct northerly or northeasterly. So the GFS really teasing there of a very cold pattern, but pushing all that cold air into Europe. But interesting nonetheless, because it is a major development, major change from the last few days, which kept the high pressure over the top of us instead, pushing it well to our north. Have seen hints over the last few days, but we're actually seeing some consistency from the operational runs and actually a bit of support from the ensembles as well. Now, as I said... Most of the operational runs are going for this potential push northwards with higher pressure. The GM is doing it as well. High pressure building in next week, as expected. That high pressure edges northwards, tries to develop into a northerly flow. Doesn't fully develop, so we wouldn't see anything amazingly cold. But still, very cold air trying to push in, uh, but just lingering to our north. Look at that. We're on the cusp of something very cold but it doesn't quite push in because we don't quite get that ridge fully developing to our north. So very, very close, but no cigar at this time frame. Nonetheless, though, 
and very similar to the GFS, not fully putting off a very cold pattern, but huge developments, huge changes from what we've seen the last few days. In the grand scheme, it's subtle changes, but it has huge implications at the surface. All we're seeing is that high pressure pushing further north and instead of sat over the top of us, which is in the grand scheme of things, isn't that massive a change, but it makes a huge difference to what we see at the surface between average air masses to potentially cold or very cold air masses into early November. Now, if you compare it to the East MWF, which is probably the coldest run today, we do see, again, low pressure moving through at the moment, high pressure building in for all of next week, looking stunning for Halloween. But that same area of high pressure extends towards Greenland and Iceland, and we see a northerly wind. Now, it doesn't penetrate fully into the Arctic, so we're not going to see anything, again, sustained, but a very cold northerly wind pushes in here for the first day of November. The minus five isotherm moves through for all, and we see a good two or three days of very cold conditions under this area of high pressure for eventually topples away. If we do zoom in, we'll be able to see that the surface temperatures would be very cold. If we move back to the first day of this cold air moving in, you see Wednesday the 30th of October, mild, mid-teens, uh, again, very mild for Halloween, into the double digits, maybe low teens, around 6pm when most people are going out trick or treating. So actually a very mild Halloween. But look at that cold air sweeping in for the Friday by 6pm, 6 or 7 degrees at best, by midnight down towards 2 or 3, and into the early hours of the 2nd November, widely towards freezing. By Saturday afternoon here, look at that, 6 or 7 degrees at best, and overnight, once again, widely down towards freezing. So that would be a real change indeed, 15, 16 degrees mid next week, to maybe below freezing by the weekend, with daytime highs of only 6 or 7 so again, very interesting develops from the operational runs today. I will stress it is early November, so it is impossible to see widespread snow, widespread cold, but nonetheless, very interesting signs. And if this sort of high pressure push towards Greenland and Iceland persists, then it could cause something quite a bit major as we head, or quite a bit more major as we head into the latter part of November and early December, and dare I say, heading towards Christmas. Now, we all know how quickly things can change. So again, I wouldn't bank on this, but nonetheless, it is very interesting to see the first potentially proper colder pattern as we head into the late autumn, early winter. Now, if you finish by looking at the latest ensembles, you can see this development here on the latest GFS, mild and dry over the next week. But as we head into early November, we still say very dry, that's high pressure dominated, but look at that, about five, six, seven, eight runs now going below average and well below average there. So yes, it's not the majority of runs, majority still keep us above average, but a big shift from the runs yesterday that we saw in yesterday's video, where all were above average, very few were below average. Today, we're seeing a shift of maybe about a quarter of the ensemble members going well below average. Maybe tomorrow it'll be half, I don't know. That is what we're going to have to watch over the next few days. Now, if we go to Glasgow, this will give a bit more of an insight, because of course Scotland would be the first to see proper colder air. And again, about 8 to 10 on some members going cold or very cold. Again, we'll have to wait and see. But if we compare to the ECMWF ensemble members for the midnight run, look at that, a lot more going cold or very cold. Now, it's not quite as distinct here for Scotland, and that's because Scotland has a lower average. Uh, the average, as we hit into early November, gets close towards freezing at 850 HPA. But nonetheless, it's fairly dry, at least for Scotland into early November, and much colder runs appearing. And it's emphasised further by looking at the latest London ensemble members here. Look at that, a good chunk of ensemble members are five to 10 degrees below average and staying very dry. And again, if we look at those two meter temperatures, you see a big drop off from some of these ensemble members towards the mid to high single digits at best come early November. So yeah, very interesting to see. Uh, it looked fairly warm, mild uh, and dry. Uh, in the last few days, and it still looks like that for the next week, but it's into that longer range, into early November, that's where things could take a shift. It's not a major change at the sort of pressure level, it's just that high pressure penetrating slightly further northwards. But if it does, then things could be very interesting 
into early November with potentially some more colder weather coming and more potent colder weather. Not what we saw in September and early October where we saw colder blasts not lasting too long and frosts more isolated to rural areas. This could be a lot more potent, a lot more widespread simply because it is later in the year. We'll have to keep a very close eye on it. And of course, it is interesting developments as we do head towards the main period of winter, December, January, February, of course, into March as well. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again with another video soon.